Qatar Airways evening flight is ready for departure. Finally closed. Check-in definitely closed on economy and first class. Duty manager Nowamans checking all the baggage bins are ready to load. It's an important night as four VIP passengers are on his flight, members of the Qatari royal family. But as the plane boards, there's a serious problem. They're not even here yet to the, air in the airport. They're not even in Heathrow? No, they're not even in Heathrow. Although the royal bags arrived in advance this afternoon, the royal passengers are still on the road. Uh, just to let a bit ward know all the passengers are on board, and we're only missing this VIP group. At £4,000 a ticket, these frequent flyers are important to Qatar Airways, but just as important is leaving on time. It's now a man's worst nightmare. Delay departure or face the wrath of the royal family. I don't think they will be on the plane. Eighty-five percent. I don't think they're going to make it. Yes, my head. Are you sure they are in the gate, my head? Okay, Habibi. Okay, no problem. What, what, what? Well, on the tunnel. They just come out of the tunnel. They're not going to make it, my head. My head. I'm not willing to delay this flight even five minutes. Okay, within five minutes. No problem. Bye. No problem. No problem, Habibi. Bye. Bye. I'm giving him five more minutes. With time so tight, now a man has no choice but to offload the royal bags. I didn't want to load them just in case the passengers are not here, because if the passengers are not here another five minutes, the, the VIPs are offloaded, so are their bags. This is the reason why I'm keeping those bags there. A different group of VIPs are already waiting for their plane. Richard Branson, his staff and the press are expecting the victorious Ryder Cup golf team who've just landed from America. Waiting with them is Steve Exery, airfield safety officer and self-confessed golf nut. With his shift over, he snuck inside the terminal building. It's uncharted territory for me. This is like Indian country. We don't know where we are. Also heading for the party are journalists Steve Meller and photographer Russell Clisby. Both are always trying to find a good angle. It's, it's the sort of the, the final part of the news story. They, they won the Ryder Cup. They've already said how wonderful that was and talked about it. It's the final part. This is the big welcome home. But for Russell, it's personal. I think it's fantastic. You know, we've seen a few victorious teams now, Ryder Cup teams. I mean, I love golf. And uh... Didn't you say you had a tear in your eye? <laughs> yeah. I, I did have a tear in my eye. <laughs> As there's time to kill waiting for the golfers, Steve indulges in some polite chit-chat with the nearest multi-millionaire. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 your, it's your favourite golfer here. Yeah. Oh, I've absolutely got a favourite. I like Bernard Langer, yeah. but I just love golf. Do you play golf? I do, but not, but not, not that well. Right. There's encouraging news for now, a man. His royal passengers have made it to Heathrow and are being allowed to drive straight to the plane from the VIP security post. To Mohammed, are you with the passengers? But while he's waiting, some transfer passengers arrive, desperate to board his flight. Sorry, guys, we closed. What? I've already told their Canada. Hey. Yeah, the flight leaves in 10 minutes. I'm not going to be well, able no, to No, leaves in 15 minutes. It's 16 minutes after. Yes. Come on, give us a... Sorry, sir. Are you going to put us up? No, I'm not going to be able to put well, you on this What the hell? Flight. I'm sorry, but what's going on? I don't know how many times I've sat in a plane waiting for people to make connections. You know, I've yet to make the other way around. It's going to take us another 15 minutes to check you in. And, and your bags will never make it on the flights as well. I'm not worried about the bags. Well, we were worried about the bags, sir. So I'm, I'm so sorry. There's not much I could do. I'm afraid so. Sorry. As now a man's flight prepares to depart, the Canadians are far from happy about their unexpected stopover. Well, we just spent seven and a half hours on a plane from Canada, so we want to spend another eight hours going to Qatar, eh? We just need another 12 hours or whatever as a layover. We're stairs, I'm on the staircase already. We're staircase. Is he there? Is he there? News has come in from downstairs that the royals have finally arrived. 
Now all now man has to do is escort them up the back stairs, reload their bags and settle them in their first class seats before sending the plane off on time. Have a nice flight. Bye bye. The Canadians did fly, but the following day. It's a normal night for us. This is the usual stuff. We see this every day. This is the normal stuff. <laughs> Traffic warden Nikki Taylor is finally coming to the end of her long day. Last on her round is the airport coach station. While she's looking for cars where they shouldn't be, she discovers something mysterious. Yeah, I'm in the bus station, uh, stand 14. Uh, could you send a PC down? What's happened here? This coach driver approached me and said that he thinks there's been two bags taken, stolen from the back of his coach. Well, you can come with me to have a look for your bag around the bus station. Okay. See if you can spot it. Um, the couple concerned have just got married, and it's such a shame. Terrible ending to a, a lovely holiday. No one knows who's taken the honeymooners' bag, but there's hope that the thief is still nearby. Would it be worth me and Sir here to go round the bus station and just have a look? Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you know what it looks like, don't you? Yeah. Okay. But without a description of the culprit, the only chance of finding the stolen bag is to eye up everyone else's luggage. They surely wouldn't be silly enough to be out in the open, would they? It's amazing what people do. Even though there's a bus to catch and a thief on the run, the search must be thorough. And I'll check in the ladies. <laughs> You can't come in. It's a bit fresh out here, isn't it? Yeah. As the Ryder Cup plane reaches its final destination, Airfield Safety Officer Steve has spotted Richard Branson on the apron. And he's not properly dressed. Richard Branson's got no tabard on, so we need to do it because we need to protect his safety, don't we? We're sort of out, yeah. Oh, oh, if you're Well, it wasn't so much he didn't take kindly to it. He, he didn't mind putting it on, but he just says after the photo, so that's fair enough. We need jackets on up there. We're not killed, Joyce. Russell's ready and waiting for his photo op, but Steve knows it'll be some time before he can get his quote. Really freezing out here. And there's one shot Russell's desperate to get. Captain Bernhard Langer emerging with the cup alone. Oh, Richard, don't go up with him. Oh, no, 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 no. Here you come now. Come now. Come now. Come now. I've got technical difficulties. Team! Yo! So far, eh? That's what you want. That was good, wasn't it? At last, Steve spots his chance for a story. What we're going to do now is dash down to arrivals, beat them down there, and see what, uh, see what welcome home they get. Hopefully a big hero's welcome. That's what I'm looking for. But as he rushes off to arrivals, the golfing hero's welcome has already begun. So we're on the way to the gate room. This is where we catch him. Thank you. Do you mind me, Gal? Well done. Thank you. I bet it feels good, doesn't it? Last week, the Ryder Cup team left Heathrow before Steve could meet all of his heroes. This time, he's not letting any of them get away. <laughs> Hang on, man.